Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us yet again for an episode of That Solo Life. We are the podcast for PR pros, marketers, really anyone running a solo shop in the world of communications. I am Michelle Kane. My company is Voice Matters, and I am here as ever with our leader of the pack that is solo PR pro, Karen Swim. Hey, Karen, how are you today? Hello, Michelle. I'm doing great. How are you? Well, I'm good. I'm good. You know, using the, the, the holiday season is looming and yes. all that good stuff. So just, you know, trying to keep my head screwed on straight. But what will really help us focus today is we're talking about money specifically when a client yes. says, how about some equity in our company instead of paying you cash right now? What do you think? It's tempting. However, yeah. I don't know cash in the bank is always nice. So we're going to chat about that a bit today. I know a lot of solos have been yeah. approached with that, you know, opportunity and it can be, it can be very tempting because if you see the potential, I'll say that this mostly, this mainly can come from startups. If you're working with startups, you know, who might be a little, you know, cash, I don't want to say cash poor, but they may be a cash lean and uh, you know, they see a lot of promise in themselves. So they want to offer you something. It's kind of like, you know, when uh, actors take a, what is it, box office points on the back end, and it ends up being a great deal. <laughs> but for us solos, maybe not. <laughs> I would not have thought of that example. <laughs> I I will probably, not even probably, I will never have to entertain that conversation of whether I will take a percentage of box office on the back end of a film that I will sure. never be in. That's nice to think about. And yeah. and I think even, you know, look, it's all it's almost like um almost like, you know, oh, I might win the lottery. Can it benefit you greatly? Sure. Yeah. Can it create some uh, maybe a difficult landscape for you to navigate in your client relationship? Yes. And yeah, in- but but let's frame this. So yeah. let's let's do a little reality check first. Um yeah. here, Absolutely right. This is super common in the startup world. Yeah. 90% of startup companies fail. 90. Okay. So you know that the majority of them fell in years two through five, a full 70% of those startup companies with those giant big ideas, even though they may have had some funding fell in years two to five. And so understand that. And so Sometimes the argument that I hear against, you know, equity in the company, particularly because there are, we will discuss some other alternative payment arrangements, is that these companies want you to now put your belief in them as well, right? Believing that you'll get so much more back with equity in this great company, but what if that company fails? Right now, you have not only done free work, but you've got nothing. You've got, you know, you've given away your time and your resources. So the way that I like to approach this, it's it's not that it's ever a terrible decision to make, but I think that you have to make it with a business mindset and not an emotional mindset. There have been plenty of companies that I've worked for that I have loved, that I've used their stuff, that I've completely believed in, but when it comes to investments. You know, I have to fall back on treating that like an investment. So Mm -hmm. if this company were somebody off the street and you had no relationship with them, would you be taking money out of your bank account and investing it into them? Because essentially that's what you're doing. You're writing them a check. You are investing directly in them. You're not investing through a third-party investor. You're investing in this company. Mm -hmm. Is your belief that strong enough? Do you know enough? Do you know enough about their operations? Do you know enough? Really, because from the PR standpoint, we know what we know and we can evaluate the competitive landscape, but this really should be, now we're not talking about a work situation. They're really asking you to make an investment in their company. And so you really have to, even though you're not physically signing a check, you really are. You're signing a check. So is this money that you're willing to give away? So if you would have been getting let's just say twenty thirty thousand dollars payment for a project would you be are you willing to cut a check for them to that amount because that's what you're doing on the hope of return right what I would say sometimes you know there are companies that yes you would absolutely invest in and yes they are going to be among that you know ten percent 
that do not fail and could grow into something massive. And you do want a piece of it. Maybe think about negotiating some type of a bonus structure where you're not just waiting on cash. You should get paid something because Mm -hmm. you have a business to run. And even though you may be a solo and your only employee, you want to run it as though you have employees. Would you take equity? How are you going to pay your people with that? Mm -hmm. How are you going to pay your bills with equity now? Even the startups are taking salaries for themselves because they have to live. And I think that that is the, the argument that you have to make. That's great. I think your company is wonderful. And as a matter of fact, I would love to share in some of that equity. However, there's got to be a balance between getting paid for my work right now and then coming up with maybe some type of bonus structure where I can participate with you in that way. And of course, you want to check all of this against rules to make sure that there's no conflicts of interest and that you're not in any ethical violation, that you're not, you know, all of those things come into play. So a lot of people rush into that and they get caught up in the excitement of this innovative company that's going places because, I'm going to say something that maybe clients don't even understand about us is that PR people get really excited about everything. <laughs> we do. We do. We're I mean, pretty excitable, pretty happy, yeah. optimistic people. <laughs> and so when you are telling us that you're the greatest, we, the reason that we're working with you is because we believe that too. And yeah. so we are going to pull out the pom-poms and we are going to rah-rah our way to success for you. <laughs> now I, <laughs> I, I, we are people. <laughs> it's so true. And and it, and it's because, you know, we are we are your champion out there. So we we really have to feel it to a certain degree. Wouldn't yeah. it be nice if we could go through this this profession without, you know, having to deal with some of the emotion of it and the, and that that output of ugh, our souls. But I love how you framed that in that, yeah, would I write this client a check? You know, because, yeah. and I think that is that fine line of, you know, no, I'm not an employee. So if you fail or if you close, there's no unemployment line for me. There is no severance package. There is nothing. And, you know, I think even if you think it's going to pay off for you and it, you go into this, you know, that resentment can creep in after a while, especially because that kind of work is probably going to be challenging you know because this is if it's especially if it's a startup no one's heard of this yeah. you know you're you're trying to to gain some some good um, placements and place in the marketplace for this client that that may be virtually unknown and you know you really want to be working for nothing because then at the end of the month your bills come due and you go you know what's the old saying my lecture company doesn't like to get paid in beer so you know i won't accept it Beer is payment. <laughs> so true. I mean, oh, yeah. and, and listen, if you're at a point in your career where you want to do some of this, then be intentional about it. You know, maybe you're right. at a point in your career where the money doesn't matter. Maybe you are, you know, and 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 this doesn't mean that you are, you know, over a certain age because this can happen for young people too. Maybe you've done something, maybe you've sold a company, maybe you've banked a bunch of money yeah. and you want to take on, you know, helping some of these companies in that way. That is part of your business model and it's very intentional, but far too often when this conversation comes up and it comes up, you know, a fair amount, this is, you talk to a company, you've gone through, you know, these pre-proposal discussions to put together a proposal and now they don't want to pay you cash. Mm -hmm. For me, it says that maybe they're not ready for PR because you want me to believe in you, but do you believe in yourself enough to believe that? paying this money, investing in this effort is going to produce results for you. Um, People can be a wonderful weapon in terms of getting in front of investors and, you know, establishing a thought leadership platform and helping you to reach your customers more importantly. So Mm -hmm. I would say probably what's happening is that you have a limited amount of cash, like all people do, but your cash is so limited that, you are trying not to spend. And if you're trying not to spend, that doesn't sound like the longest term relationship. And it sounds like I'm going to be working really hard, but at the end of it, there's no check for me. Right. So, you know, I would 
wonder about those businesses and the longevity just in making that offer. But right. Because yeah, I mean, even if they're funded, you know, the the term burn rate comes to mind. What's the burn rate on the cash they have? How many months do they have to to stay alive in this situation? You know, and I love that our friendship Griffin yeah. has popped into our YouTube comments and, and also bringing up the very good point of, yeah. you know, taking equity as payment can bring some tax implications. Do you want, you know, do you want anything new to manage in that, on the, on that front? Yeah. But getting back to your training thought, Karen, I love how you're saying that, you know, maybe you're at a point in your career where, the, where yeah, okay, fine, let, let's do a little bit of this. So I, I think many of us may have, you know, say 5% of our business that we're fine to do pro bono work. So maybe you consider this as part of that sliver of pro bono work, where, hey, if I get paid in the end, that's great. If not, this is fun. It lets me maybe break into a new industry niche that I'm looking to, you know, learn a bit about, you know, there, there may be more to it than the money, um, yeah. that's, that's a benefit to you, but you want to make sure anytime you do, you know, any kind of business that you're well protected. There's the key and that you value your work and what you do enough. And again, I go back to it. Would an agency take equity? <laughs> Are they going to make payroll on equity? I mean, so you can't look at yourself and think, well, it's just me. It's okay. It's not okay. Your time is worth something. And I think that you should always walk away with payment for your work unless you are very intentionally doing pro bono work. Um, And some people love to do pro bono work for what they do. I think that you definitely have to set some limits around that too, because then you end up volunteering away your time. And that can make you not such a cheerful giver (laughs) because this is the stuff that you do for a living. Um, So really, you know, you need to demand what you're worth and you need to think of yourself as the business that you are and take care of yourself. Now there's other things that people offer, Michelle. What are some of the other things that we've heard and seen in terms of not getting paid cash? (laughs) Um, Well, I mean, there, there are some situations where you may choose to barter, right? And, you know, I, I do that sometimes with, long-term friends who go into business, you know, things like that. But, you know, those, these aren't sustaining clients, of course. Yeah. You know, we've also seen situations where, you know, a client may try and negotiate our rate and, you know, we always, we get into formation and we say, hold the line, don't lower your rate. You know, there's always room to play with scope. No, there's always room to play with scope. You know, okay. You may not be able to, Mm -hmm you know, afford the full sandwich today. So I'll give you a quarter of the sandwich and you'll still have something to eat. I'm just all over with the weird analogies today. But, (laughs) you know, I love that you brought up bartering. Um, When I first started in business that it was so popular, everybody was bartering their little hearts out. But the thing that we quickly realized about bartering is that, you know, number one, when people do not have any skin in the game, and I think, you know, I'd love to hear Chip's perspective on this because he's so smart about these things. When people do not have skin in the game, they tend not to value it. Um, yes. And so one of the lessons that I learned from the marketing side of the house and really took with me into this career is that your price is actually part of your brand and your marketing. Mm-hmm. If it's too low, people don't value you. So you really have to be very strategic and very scientific about that. So if you are, you're essentially giving something away and Chip makes a great point. And I completely agree with this, that a lot of barter arrangements are uneven. So Mm -hmm. not everybody is getting 100% something that they absolutely wanted, treasure, love. So somebody gets the short end of the stick. You give, give away your business for something that somebody's offering that may be something that you really didn't even want and something that you would not have paid money for. Yeah. I like paying for things and I like people paying me for things. I like people paying me for things because then I think that they're going to treat that like the investment that it really is. And they're going to see me as the professional that I really am. If you bartered for me, eh, 
Yeah. It's it's so expendable. I mean, think and it isn't. I think for parents in the audience who really get this, you are trying to teach your kids to value things, and you know that free is not really valued. Yeah. So sometimes you have your kids do chores or do other things depending on their age range to teach them about earning and teaching them how to place value on things because just giving them stuff doesn't teach anything. And that, that goes into adulthood. Definitely. Definitely. I, I think, you know, the bottom line is what whatever you choose, you have to be absolutely certain it is going to work for you in your favor, both short-term and long-term. Because even in the partnering situations, yeah, sometimes you get to the point where you're like, eh, you know what, can I just pay you? what we do <laughs> we just keep life simple yeah. but that you know that goes with anything right there's a season for for most everything you know whether it's client work that you're paid for or things that you do pro bono you know but the bottom line is i, th- I think it's it's the crux of of everything that we do talk about is valuing your worth as a professional and what you do contribute i agree and, you know and and, and not not moving from that, just staying, standing firm in that, because it, it does matter on so many levels. I like Chip's comment, because I was just about to touch on this too. Um, you know, Chip says, he's happy to do favors and friends for colleagues. I agree. I mean, I know sometimes mm-hmm. I come across as like, pay me. <laughs> and that's <laughs> me in a nice way. But, you know, for my friends, I've Absolutely yeah. jumped into situations where they could use some PR counsel and absolutely yeah. will give them my counsel. And you know what? Guess what? Those friends would do the same for me when it comes to an area of their expertise. Yep. So it doesn't mean that you're not ever, you know, having these exchanges, but oh. you're thoughtful about how you have them. And even with certain friends, not my inner circle friends, but certain friends, you know, I've I've seen this scenario too where you're going all out because a friend of a friend or friend, you know, friend of a friend wanted this. And, and you, because you like your friend, you feel obligated to do this thing. Please don't. When your friend has a friend, (laughs) sometimes the best thing that you can do is go, you know what? I really can't take that on or I can't help, but let me give you some names because I will tell you, and I learned this from hard experience. The moment that you refer to somebody that's good, suddenly money appears on the table. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? amazing. You would have gotten paid for that, or you would have gotten paid less because Uh there was this inherent belief and some, and and you'll know them. You, when I say this, I know that all of you will have a situation in your head. Oh, yeah. It's every friend of a friend, but you know the friend of a friend that I'm talking about believes that because they have this in, they have the hookup that you're going to be cheaper. But the money appears when it's a stranger. So yeah. sometimes the best thing that you could do for your friend and the friendship is when they have that friend of a friend, refer them to somebody else. You're busy. Yeah. Sorry. I'm I'm just full up right now. There's no way I can take that on. And uh, yeah. I, I imagine too, everyone has this in their, well, maybe not everyone, maybe they're smarter than me, you know, where you do that favor and it's, you know, it's it's not like a massive ton of work, but it's a significant amount of work. Oh, I'll take you to lunch. I'm like, okay, now I have to spend another hour with you, even though I like you, so you can buy me a sandwich. No, not <laughs> a nice, you know, full on spa day. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> so I can recuperate me, from my labor. For me. <laughs> if you love me, pay for doggy daycare. You know, yeah, like oh, no, exactly. It's like, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm you gonna really gonna, love I, me. Give me a couple of doggy daycare days. <laughs> I can buy my own dinner. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. And I we don't want our audience because we know that PR people are, we're givers. We are. We are. And, and we, we believe are. That people in our audience are so good hearted. But yeah. we always come back to this, that this is one of the tougher things about being in business is that you do have to wear a different hat and, yeah. and you have to take care of your business. These people that are asking for things for free or trying to negotiate your rate, they're taking care of their business. And so it's not a contest of wills. It's not that they're trying to get over on you necessarily, although people out there like that exist. Mm -hmm. It's that they're looking out for themselves. And 
they're expecting you to look out for yourself. I don't think anybody is is really trying to take from you and thinking that they're taking food off your table or, you know, money away from your, you and your family. They're not right. thinking that, not going into this arrangement going, to, I don't care if her kids don't eat. They're just doing what they believe is best for them. And so- yeah. Of course, you need to do what's best for you. And sometimes it's beautiful when the two things can come together and you have these beautiful client relationships, but when they don't work out and and here's where I think PR people really get caught. It's okay to say no, you can turn down work. It's not the last offer of work that you will ever get. Too often we put ourselves in these situations of accepting, you know, lower fees or barter arrangements or alternative arrangements because we're scared. We're scared that something else is not behind them. I promise you something else is always behind them. Agree. Agree. And oftentimes, you know, when you do take on something that you probably shouldn't have, well, now you don't have room for the next great opportunity. So we we hope this is the next big opportunity. (laughs) There is. There is. Well, we hope this has inspired you, affirmed you. I know sometimes we're even talking to ourselves when we have these conversations, <laughs> but we do, we value your time that you spend with us. And if you have found this valuable, please do share, share, share this podcast. We want to make sure that anyone who can listen does. And until next time, thanks for joining us on That's All Life. <laughs>